can hear? Very good. My name is Jivananda, as uh, Prabhu was saying, and we're here to talk about yoga. What is yoga? We hear so much about yoga, isn't it? Now in India, we've heard about yoga for thousands, millions of years. But this term yoga in the West is very new. You see? So a lot of people and younger people may wonder, what does it actually mean? What does the yoga thing apply to? What's the process? So a lot of people in the West think that yoga is something that we do to feel better. We do yoga. Is this better? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some people think that we do yoga so that we'll feel better. Like for health. It's like going to the gym. You know, people go to the gym and they lift weights and they work out. So unfortunately, yoga has been classified into something to just do for your body. But that's not the purpose of yoga at all. Yoga, of course, will take care of your body, but yoga is meant for the soul. Yoga is for your soul. Does anybody have a soul? Yes. All right, now, is any, does anybody realize that you are the soul? That was a trick question. Some people say, yes, I have a soul, but actually, you are the soul. You're not a body that has a soul. You're a soul that has a body. So, the soul, what is the nature of the soul? What is your true nature? Your true nature is an eternal living entity. That's what you are. And what is your activity eternally? For eternity going this way, eternity, what have you always done before you came to this material world? The soul's nature is to be an eternal servant of Lord Krishna. That's the purpose of the soul. So you're an eternal living entity. True identification means to realize that you are an eternal servant of God. Does that make any sense? You see? <clears throat> so if I am an eternal soul and I'm not this body, then why should I spend so much time taking care of the body? I should spend more time on me, the soul. I am eternal, you see? So I need to work on me, my true identity, as eternal servant of God. Now, right now I want to clarify. Some people say, well, God's name is this, God's name is that. <clears throat> but we have to admit God is someone that is omnipotent. He's unlimited, right? So God has unlimited names. So if you call one God, one person calls God Jehovah, one person calls God Allah, one person says Krishna, we're all talking about the same guy. We say Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead because Krishna is the embraceable, lovable form of God. With Lord Krishna, you can approach him and be his loving servant. You can embrace him, hold his hand. If you want to worship God with great awe and reverence, then there are other personalities. He has unlimited personalities. But many people would prefer to approach God with love and to receive his love. You give him love and you receive love. It's a loving exchange, you see. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I think we could define this term yoga by saying that yoga means you plus God. Like a, a mathematical equation. Yoga equal you plus God. The, pur the purpose of yoga is to link you to God. Reacquaint you with God. It's like the word religion. Religion is a word that comes from Latin, and it means, it's, the Latin word is relegate, which means to reunite. Even the Christians, when they say, I have religion, religion means to reunite. Yoga means to reunite with the Supreme. 
Yoga equals you plus God. So the purpose of yoga is to reestablish your eternal relationship with God, which we have, but we, for whatever reason, we've forgotten. So here I am, I'm thinking I'm an American, I'm thinking I'm a human being, I'm a man, I'm this, but I'm just a soul that appears in an American body. When we work it down to the, to the soul level, we are all the same. We have individual personalities, but we are all servants of Krishna, every one of us. And if somebody says, oh, I don't like that name Krishna, okay, find a, find a real name of God and call him that. If you say, I prefer Jehovah, that's very good. That's bona fide. You could say, Narayan. Okay, yes, use Narayan. We say Krishna because Krishna is the form of God. Why is he the supreme personality? Because love is the supreme force. There's no force greater than love. Okay? Lack of love is the greatest devastation that a human being can ever experience. To have pure love, supreme love, we first approach the Supreme Lord. Okay? It's like if you water a tree. If you have a tree, like if this tree over here, if the branches are getting dry, if you pour water on the branches, does that help? You have to pour water on the root. So, we want to have a loving exchange. Let's direct our love to God. Water the root of the tree. When we direct our love to God, all living entities get the benefit. As I learn to love God, I learn to love you. You see? When I realize that I am an eternal spirit soul, I'm an eternal servant of God, and so are you. Regardless of what body you may be in or what body I might be in, now we are united. Now we see past the borders of countries. We see differences. We don't see the differences in the colors of bodies. We see we are all eternal souls. We are all eternal servants of Krishna. We are soulmates. We have always been together before we came to this material world. And after we leave this material world, we will always be together for eternity. We are united as one, yet different. It's not all one big soup. We don't leave and go merge into a, a big something and, and lose our personality. We are all one, but at the same time, we are separate in our identity and our service to the Supreme Lord. Does that make any sense? Oh, um, I can pause right now. I can go on, but I'll pause now and see. Are there any questions or comments? Anybody? Yes, Dr. Mishra. Yeah, you said that you can take any name of the God. You can call Krishna, you can call him Yehovah. So, which is the best name to chant or to address to the God? It's a good name. By the way, you need a, a, a bona fide name. You can't say, well, I think God's name is Fred. So I'm going to call him Fred. That doesn't work, you see. He has many names. So, which one? It depends on you and the relationship that you want to have with God. If you want a relationship with God that you never really get very close to Him, and that maybe when you see Him a mile away, you fall down in awe and reverence, and you would never approach, and never touch, because He's God in your awe and reverence, then you might chant Narayan, Narayan, Lord Narayan is Krishna manifest in his Narayan form. He is awe-inspiring, you see. You look at him and you're awe-stricken. You see, oh, there is God. That is the supreme personality of God. So if we say Allah, Allah, is that okay? That's okay. Allah is okay. Very good. But the personality of Krishna, when we say that name Krishna, Krishna is present. This personality of Krishna is not one that we worship in awe and reverence. 
With Krishna, we approach him, we embrace him. We hold his hand, we sing, and we dance with him. You see, we exchange loving pastimes. That is Krishna. We exchange pure love of Godhead. We give love, he exchanges, you see. For us to love him in the way that he wants us to, we don't see Krishna as God when we're liberated. He's just wonderful Krishna. Did Mother Yashoda see her son as God? No. He was just her wonderful son. Did you have a question? Huh? Who's the biggest God? Who's the biggest God? <clears throat> God is all big. God can be the, the biggest and He can be the smallest. So they're, they're not all, they're not measured by size. They're all the same. They have different appearances, different personalities, according to the relationship that we want to have with them. Does that make any sense? So, what about if someone says, but I don't know, <coughs> I don't know if I want to go to Krishna. I want material things. I want money. Success, right? I want fame. I want profit. I want adoration and I want distinction. So I can approach Shivaji. Shivaji will give me, isn't it? So, and that's true. Lord Shiva can give whatever you ask. You make some offering, some puja, Lord Shiva will award. Where does Shiva get what he gives? From Krishna. Krishna is the supplier. Krishna is the origin of everything. So, you may approach Lord Shiva, Ganesh, whomever. You can approach any demigod. They may make some award. But they have to get it from Krishna. They, they take from Krishna and they hand to you. You see? It's just like if uh, anybody here own a business? Any businessmen here? If you own a business, let's say, I like to use the example of like, if you own a hotel, if you go into a hotel and you want to, you need a room. So you go up to the, the person behind the desk and you say, I need a room for the night. And they say, okay, very good, that'll be $100. So you give that person $100 and they give you a room. You see? It's not their room though. Someone owns the motel. They're supplying the room. And the money that you give them, they don't keep it. They have to give it to the owner of the motel. So they're not the supplier and they don't get to keep the puja that you offer to them. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, in 5th chapter, 29th verse, I am the ultimate recipient of all austerities and penances. Whatever you offer to anybody ultimately ends up with Krishna. You can offer a puja to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva accepts and he passes on to Krishna. You're asking for, for some boon, Krishna gives and he gives to you. You see? So, the demigods are there as servants of Krishna. They're higher than we are, but they're great servants of the Supreme Lord. Does that make any sense? You see? So, we can go directly to Krishna. Lord Shiva's not angry if you go to Krishna and say, My dear Lord, can you please give me money? My dear Lord, I'm desperate. I have no one to turn to but you. Please help me. My dear Lord, I'm curious about you and your nature and our relationship. Or my dear Lord, I've been searching for you for millions and millions of years. These are all four pious activities to approach Krishna. You see? So we can approach Krishna for money. The danger is that if you approach Krishna, whatever material desire you have, might go away when you see his beauty. When you embrace Krishna, you may forget your material desires because you're happier than whatever your material desires could possibly ever give you. You see? If one has Krishna, you have everything. You see? You couldn't want anything if you have Krishna. 
Does that make any sense? Any more questions or comments? How many names Krishna has? Krishna has unlimited names. They cannot be counted. No way to count it. Anybody else? So you can understand whatever we offer ends up with Lord Krishna. Bhaktaram Jagyatapasyam Sarva Loka Maheshwara Krishna says, I am the Lord of all the planets and all the inhabitants therein. So I am the Lord of all the living entities as well as the demigods. Bhaktaram Jagyatapasyam Sarva Loka Maheshwara Shuri Dham Sarva Bhutana Shuri Shuri is best friend Krishna says, I am the best friend of all living entities. Shuri, Shuri Dham Sarva Bhutana Yatvamam Shantim Richati Knowing this, you will be free from all suffering and all pangs of material existence. Just knowing that my dear Lord, <clears throat> you are the recipient of all my offerings. My dear Lord, you are the Lord and Master of all planets, all living entities. My dear Lord, you are my best friend and always my ever well wisher And now that I realize this, my heart is clean and I am happy and blissful. You see? So Krishna is one we approach when we want to extinguish the blazing fire of material existence. We want to get out of the suffering of the material world. <clears throat> Krishna is not going to take everything and leave you with nothing. When you approach Krishna with love, you get Krishna. With Krishna, you have everything. Who knows the story of Dhruva Maharaj? You know, anybody know the story of Dhruva? Dhruva Maharaj, do you know it? Dhruva Maharaj, he wanted a kingdom bigger than his father's, didn't he? You need to go so he went yeah, to the and forest just go after and he chanted. Minutes. What did he chant? Yeah. Thank Thank you. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om For how long? Bhagavate long time. Many, many months. And after chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, he felt the presence. And he looked, and there stands Krishna. Krishna appeared to the Dhruva. The Dhruva wanted a kingdom bigger than his father. His father was a king. He wanted the biggest kingdom he could get. And so Lord, Lord Krishna, so, so Lord, Lord Krishna says, all right, I'll grant you any boon you want. And Dhruva Maharaj, what did he ask for? My dear Lord Krishna, now that I see you, I simply want you and nothing else. And everything else, all the jewels I wanted seem like pieces of broken glass. So, if you get Krishna, you have everything. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.